That's Oso. I'm Walter. Welcome to the Hotline of Diecast. I'm gonna grab the kid a treat. I'll be back. All right. The kid's been taken care of. He's just, you know, he's just a kid, you know? Stumbling around with his big dumb puppy paws, you know, and hitting his head on the counters, you know? He's just, he's just a kid learning his way through. And, uh, funny segue. You know, I see that happening, and it's not always cute with some noobs, you know, some new guys in the hobby. So what I'd, <laughs> when I was a new guy in the hobby, I didn't have anyone or some a resident guide to share with me things. I just I had to learn with the bumps and the bruises of it, you know. And so maybe what I can do is save some of you guys that pain and be that guide and light. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go back. We're going to keep it a little elementary as well, too. So I'm going to give you guys a, a little backstory. That 1968, when Elliot Handler decided to start the brand. He got with the homie. Him and the homies, they put their names together. That putting together of names made Mattel. And Hot Wheels was created. Now, Hot Wheels, I think, was just a little play on Hot Rods. Because in 1968, Hot Rod was a big deal. And a lot of the cars they released were hot rods, you know, Camaros and so on and so forth. So let's talk about the now. And fast forward now, you know, and they're in their, what, 55th anniversary and still crushing it, still doing it. But the hobby's growing, the collectorship is growing, and the amount of cars that they're offering is growing. So I'm going to try to be that guy in light and hold your hand like a small child through this and get you some of those basics. And let's go basic. Let's start with the basics. The Hot Wheel Blue Card Mainline. This is your Volvo 850 Estate. And then, let me start from the absolute top. There are a number of versions of these slim cards. They're not blue cards. Blue cards were what we reserved for the early release cards that were all solid blue. There's also blue and white cards. They were blue and white. These are your long and your short cards here. Short cards are more popular in Europe and other countries where they don't have a lot of big retailers like Walmart, but want to carry the volume. You can get two pegs deep versus the one that you get with the U.S. card. Okay. Also, when short cards are going to be international, so there's going to be a lot of differences. You're going to notice on the U.S. card, there's a guaranteed for life. You won't get that on the international card because it's, it's tough to guarantee things in other countries. Also, languages. Multiple languages on the back of an international card versus English on the U.S. card. And that's what you get to know. Those are our entry level. Entry level basic Hot Wheel main lines. And with that, they're typically, you know, plastic base plate, but a die cast body. Sometimes you don't always get the luxury of having both headlights and tail lights. In this particular car, you kind of have to have those on there to, to distinguish what kind of car it is. So, and I'm a big fan of that car in particular, so I'm glad they decided to finish it. Those are called Tampos, the headlights and tail lights they put on there. Now, what happens is you don't, you're not always lucky enough to get those because your main lines are limited to a three Tampo pass. Now, that gives them the ability to lay down basically three versions of stickers so if there's a top sticker or tampo then they're probably you're probably going to lose a headlight or a tail light option whichever one pro is deemed more palatable for the brand that's your main line your blue cards your basics your entry level but let's not let's not fret from the main the main line cards the slim cards because not all the slim cards are deprived of value this is a Walmart exclusive Zamac. You can see that it's an unpainted car. And it's got a little gloss to it. You can see right here by my finger, it says Zamac. Now that's just an acronym for all the metals used to create these castings. Hot Wheels releases 15 cases a year in alphabetical order. They don't use the letter I or the letter O because probably because they're too relative to one and zero. Um, so they skip those, but they release them by, by case number. On the back of the card, you'll notice the last digit is a letter, that one being K. This is a K case car, and with 
the K case, you've got two options to Zaymac. Zaymax are exclusives to Walmart, so therefore they're going to be lower production numbers than the entirety of cars in the line. And they're normally not a specific car. They're a car that, that Hot Wheels is already making, but in this case, without paint. So really cool, easy to depict in a dumb bin or what have you, and are going to carry a little larger premium on a secondhand market, especially depending on which type of car it is. That's Walmart exclusive. But not to be outshined, you know, their little brothers aren't to be outshined. Their little brothers being... Target. Target has their own exclusive too. They have a red edition. These are all mainline prices, but the red edition in this case are always going to be that Target red. Not always, because sometimes it's white with red heads. Sometimes it's black with red heads. And whatever. But it's always going to be dotated by that red edition. Now, Target has more, far more than less than half. That didn't make any sense. Target has like 1,900 stores. Walmart has 4,500. So the production numbers are going to be much less in Target Red Editions than Walmart exclusive stuff. With that in mind, the Target Red Editions are going to carry a larger, higher premium than your Zamax will. So that's why those probably cost more when you're seeing them on a secondhand market. They're, they make less of them, you know, and they're just exclusive colorways to certain cars within the mainline collection already. But really cool, um, cool colors and cool ways to do it something cool for us to chase after so that's your dollar entry point to hot wheels welcome welcome to the hobby mattel the brand knows that some people understand you get what you pay for and some of them want to get more so they're going to willing to pay more mattel is going to give you that they make a dollar 97 or two dollar car type car they offer at at walmart's and typically it's going to be a character casting like the ninja turtle it's going to cost you more in the main line because there's a cross licensing agreement with, you know, TMNT as well as, you know, the vehicle maker. They're typically going to be in sets, and like I say, exclusive to Walmart. So a reason to drive customers into Walmart's doors and a different price point. You're going to get a little more deco, a little more car, maybe both a die cast upper and bottom chassis and body. Maybe you want a little more. Maybe you want to pay a couple, an extra buck. Here's your $3 car, $2.97. The Walmart Exotics, now also five car set. They're typically going to be five car sets, but you'll see them as large as eight and ten. And it's really, I don't know what the discretion, whose discretion it's up to. But I think I'm on this one because it's a strong set, $3. You're going to see a little more in regard to decoration and or styling and or uh, desirability of cars. <coughs> Pardon me. Is that your $3 price point? You know Target's not going to get outshined. They got theirs too. Here's two. Here's their Flying Customs, which definitely focuses more on like paint jobs. And this is a good example of an eight car set. This is exclusive to Target, as well as the Ultra Hots. Ultra Hots, it's deemed that because of the wheels. Those are UH wheels. Typically, all the castings in this will be featured with UH wheels, but not all of them. So it's not a guarantee. Not a guarantee at all. Also, $3 price point for you. And to uh, really entertain the taste buds of those who are willing to pay a couple bucks more. You get what you pay for. Get, get what you pay for and everything. Mattel understands some people want to pay a little more because they want a little more. So they were sure to offer that and they offered it and said, well, hey, you guys are gonna pay a premium, so let's do it. So they introduced their premium collection. They've had these for years, and haven't always been on these larger cards, but now they are, and more, uh, and they're more familiar with everyone in that regard, and normally the artwork commands and deserves it. Now with these premium cards, you're gonna get much greater detail, all the trim pieces for said car, you're gonna get really well done headlights, grill, tail lights, Everything, interior, all of it's going to be on a premium level. This is going to be in that five to six fifty price point, up to eight, depends on where you're buying them at. Uh, this is the Auto Strauss, and it's a car culture collection, not exclusive to anyone. Um, but you're going to find them at Targets and Walmart's. So that's where they do best. Um, there we go. There, exclusive to Walmart though, because they're just an empire. Are the Boulevards? that are premiums and they're going to be boulevards noted by the boulevard banner there 
as well as the checkerboard bottom. This is number one, the bone shaker. These are typically cars you're going to see at your local car show. Well, maybe not a bone shaker at your local car show. It's pretty extreme, but, but really cool cars and exclusive to Walmart. That's number one, and they're up to number 85 as of now, I believe. So a lot of really cool cars out there um, for you to try to hunt down. Now, Hot Wheels has always known this, and they've always known that people are willing to pay a premium, and collectors like cool stuff and older stuff. And so what they've done is they introduced their RLC club. And the RLC is a member exclusive club where you can order cars that are exclusive to just you. Sometimes they're numbered, not always. Here's an example of an RLC car, a very recent release, a Porsche 959. And you can see it's celebrating a Porsche 75th anniversary there. And it is Porsche's 75th anniversary, so they're making a, a number of Porsches. Cool about the RLC cars, if it's packaged like this, it's normally in a see-through, so you can admire both sides and or and it's in a hard top case container i should show you those but they're over there pardon me i'm actually waiting to sneeze again so that's your rlc card they're about 25 bucks plus your membership fee so you're getting a lot more but you're paying for a little more as well or a lot more it depends on half full half empty kind of guy and that's always did well and the collectorship still grew and there was people who just don't want to be a part of anything like that so i will saw this you know and a couple contributing factors some great designers left and you know the whole shuffled card deck so we've got to do some things and hot wheels realized especially when they lost a designer i think june of mine to be particular when they lost him, they had to really start and focus on the premium side of the 164 diecast market. They did, and they were like, well, we're going to be elite, and we're not going to limit ourselves, and we're not going to create this ceiling. So they dropped the Elite 64 series. So it's supposed to be the elite versions of 164 diecast. This was number one, and it is great. The detail, the stuff they do to these compared to the main lines is, is really cool. Um essentially think there's like 30 pieces in this versus two three in the other ones lets you know how much more detail you're going to gain on the elite these were open to the public you didn't have to be an rlc member and they roughly cost 20 to 30 dollars depending on what the casting was so again you had that ability to get a higher end very top shelf casting and not be a member of a club yeah now one one other exclusive I wanted to share with you is the two-pack exclusive, exclusive to Target. These are two packs of premium cars, and they're normally a cool theme like this Knight Rider. And they come in a three-car set, typically, or three-packaging set. And those are going to run you about the $13 price point. Transports are your next price point up. The haulers you can see here on the wall right on there. <laughs> Um, and those are going to get you for that $15 price point. And we'll, lastly, Walmart has been selling the new dioramas for $28. So you can enter this hobby and pay all sorts of different prices. Now, what you're really asking yourself is, hmm, what are they worth? Well, now that you know what you're paying for them, the value is going to determine itself in the secondhand market itself. And we have a couple different ways of determining what that value is. Uh, maybe it's the eBay sold tabs. You'll see a good rough gauge of what people were buying said pieces that you're comparing for. And you can make a rough idea of what the value is from there. Um, if you are like me, you can rely on things like this. I'll put a link to the sales page for this. But the Hot Wheels Variations, the Ultimate Guide by Mike Zarnoff. Really cool book. You have nothing but information in this. And it'll give you pictures, descriptions, even prices for the time. And I think the time was, gosh, this was released in the 90s. Right? 90. I need my glasses. I don't have my glasses. I can't even pretend like I can see that. Um, but released in the 90s. So, so the pricing is a little outdated. But gives you a good gauge for the now. You know what I mean? You, and you can all, you're also going to be able to see all the variations. 
And with that, variations, variations. Now, that's where some money is. That's where a lot of cars carry a, a different premium because they're the lower produced variation versus the upper. So maybe the wheel is different. Um, maybe the paint is different or the tampo is different. But a lot of differences and a lot of the chase for all that comes from it, uh, from an accident. Back in the early days, Hot Wheels was making a Camaro. They made this Camaro and they made it in all white because they wanted to hand it out to all the designers and get their input and get them to be able to pick out a flaw or add some sort of detail or what, what, what designers do. A lot of these cars made it into packaging and collectors heard about it. So they went chasing after this car on the pegs. Now, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, you've got a car that commands a couple few thousand probably. And that is really cool. And these were just all prototypes that made it to the public market. So Hot Wheels decided in 1995, you know, that was cool. That's, we, that, do you remember what that did for us? You know, people are talking about us. Let's do that again. So Hot Wheels introduced the Treasure Hunt series. They introduced this in 1995. And guess what car they introduced first? White Camaro. Because it already had that 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 start that legend about it, so why not introduce it as a treasure hunt? As well as back then, Hot Wheels used to limit it to ten thousand, so you knew that only you and nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine other guys had it. That white girl, it became a pretty big scene. If you have it now, the treasure hunt version too, also worth thousands. Enjoy, hold on, or sell it and go on a trip. I don't know. Don't listen to me. But Hot Wheels, understanding what that car is, they also introduced it in the RLC club. So this was an RLC exclusive version of that car. Gives you a better idea. And it really cemented the whole momentum of treasure hunts. So from 1995 on, they continued to insert treasure hunts in the collection. And um, that kept the stoke alive for everyone. And you saw in that particular one, it said treasure hunt series across it. You fast forward to the 2000, they change it up a little bit. Here's a treasure hunt from 2009. It's a Shelby Cobra Daytona Coupe. You can see that it says treasure hunts on the side there. So you now know it's a treasure hunt. Also, there's a logo there, the TH, which reflects treasure hunt. And you're going to find that on the car. So the front fender, and I believe it's on the back. Yeah, it's on the back. So that's going to help you distinguish and note that you found a treasure hunt, which is going to command and have a lot more premium because they are lower production cars. They were doing great with that. Um, I don't know if they were doing only 10,000 units a year here still, but most likely really close to that number. Now I actually go back to 2007 when they introduced super treasure hunts. These are even more rare. Man. The stoke for that is even higher and the demand is there and you got people going in and going in. And what they would do for super treasure hunts is they would take this existing treasure hunt and make a spectra flame paint and rubber wheeled version of it. They'd also change the S's to dollar signs. And that's how you'd be able to distinguish that it was a super treasure hunt versus a treasure hunt. So they would actually look different, but the packaging would be a little different as well. They don't make it that easy anymore. But you can get familiar by using tools that I and other collectors use, hwtreasure.com. Go there. It's very easy to navigate. It's, we'll hold your hand like a small child through this, and you'll be able to understand and compare and maybe find out that you have a treasure hunt or super treasure hunt in your collection already. Uh, it's a good way to go about it. Nowadays, what Hot Wheels does is they still give you those logos on the packaging and on the uh, vehicles, but they're a little harder to see. So I'm going to show you here. I'll use these two examples. So here's the mad props. These are both treasure hunts. You have a short card version and you have your long card US card version. Some differences being um, the logo. Well, you can't see it there yet, but here, if you look on the wing, right there, you see that flame logo. That is the new treasure hunt symbol. That's what's been swapped for that TH you saw. If you look under the wing and in between the wheel, that silver flame, that's on the card itself. 
And that's how you're able to distinguish that you found the treasure card. That is an international card, so it's going to be a little different on these. The U.S. card. The logos are the same and everything on the wing, but if you look under that wheel, you're going to see that there's a writing. And it says, congratulations, you have found a collectible vehicle treasure hunt. You win or something. I need my glasses. But they're going to be worded on the U.S. ones. Just a uh, flame silver symbol on the international ones. And you can go down that hole. That gives you, really, three different versions to collect. You can collect the long card U.S., the long card international, or the international short card. And have three different versions of your treasure hunt if you'd like. Now we're going to move... Well, let me first show you an example of the differences of that Super Treasure Hunt and Treasure Hunt. I'm going to show you a Super Treasure Hunt on the top and its main line on the bottom. Because now, they instead of mimicking the Treasure Hunt, they're mimicking a main line to make, it, make you search a little harder as well as uh, make, yeah, just make it harder. You can see the top one has a Spectra Flame paint. It also has a TH logo on the rear quarter panel. Rubber wheels, see that there's plastic wheels on the bottom, but very relative cars otherwise, and they're going to make you work for it sometimes. Those are pretty relative. Now, just because it's a super treasure hunt doesn't mean it's a premium car. I mean, in this one in particular, you know, they give you the headlights. Because of those top tampos, you don't get the tail lights. So you got to know that, and, and I'm, I'm sorry to break your heart, but that's what it is. Maybe you're still in a position where you want to use the card as a cheat sheet. Well, let me show you. Here's a cheat sheet option. So here is the Datsun 510 wagon. The bottom one is the Super Treasure Hunt version. You can see it's rubber wheels. See the paint job is different, as well as even the livery or the tempos that are on the side are different. You can also see there's a big TH above the heart on the Super Treasure Hunt. That helps let you know. But on the cards for these, instead of a silver flame logo, you're going to discover a gold one. That lets you know it's the Super versus a Treasure Hunt. And like I say, they don't. They mimic the main lines, not the Treasure Hunts themselves anymore. That's been such a strong corresponding trend uh even past you know transcend is just the hot wheel brand you know other die cast manufacturers also make chase pieces but well, hot wheel sees such momentum in it they were sure to even offer it to you in premium so something else you should go back to note this one says zero five and it's an all black casting in the car culture series they began introducing chases uh about a Half a year ago, maybe a little longer, and they're all going to be all black and numbered zero up five. So low production numbers as well because they just make less premiums than they do main lines. So they're going to command a different premium on a second hand market. Yeah. I think that's the uh, Hot Wheels 101. Yeah. Yes, you're right. That dollar sign, that's Mattel. So that's why the STH abbreviations you see are like that, because Mattel created that. Um, got any questions? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you and answer them to the best of my ability. I'm no Hot Wheel historian. I'm no Hot Wheel Avenger. I don't work for Mattel. I'm just a collector like you. And I really hope that you found some value in this information. You can apply it to your hobby and avoid some of those bumps and bruises I was talking about. Yeah, with that, Appreciate you guys riding along. I got some more videos coming down the pipe in regard to Hot Wheels 101. Hopefully you'll catch those and, and leave me a like. Maybe subscribe. Maybe hit the notifications button. I appreciate it. Appreciate it.
I'll let you boy. Peace.